10Ks are really hard. Last weekend I ran the Brighton 10K and in this video we're going to analyse how I did in my quest for a sub 40 10K time. By the way, my wife asked me to wear a different jumper in this video so this is what you've got. Brighton 10K comes right at the beginning of spring marathon training. Last time I did it, I missed out on sub 40 by 49 seconds. However, I went on to get a sub 40 a few weeks later at the Chichester 10K and a few weeks after that, I managed a sub three marathon in Paris. The plan for this training block is to build up to a marathon PB at Manchester in April. Let's just hope that my training goes as well this time as it did two years ago. And let's try and forget the intervening year. As well as me running the 10K, Ellis, my son, was running the one mile race and Victoria would be the tail walker for both of those events. Ellis had an absolutely fantastic run. As well as getting a park run PB the day before, he managed to smash his one mile time, coming in in seventh place in the Brighton one mile race in a time of six minutes and four seconds. Come on Ellis, as hard as you can buddy. Hard as you can, mate. Go on. Go on, push, 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 push. Go, 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 go. Where is he? He smashed it. Well done to Skyler. Good job. Well done, Tom. Absolutely brilliant. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. So, Tom, we're really you catch your breath. How are you? The weather was almost perfect for fast times on the 10K course. Virtually no wind, cold but not freezing, and on a flat, well, mostly flat, fast, closed road course, we were looking at hopefully getting a sub 30 minute winning time. I gave the camera to Ellis and set off hoping to hold on to four minutes per kilometer the whole way. I didn't know it at the time, but the boys from the Crown My Run YouTube channel were also there filming as well. Jody Mills was gunning for a 37 and a half minute 10K and he caught me on camera as he sped past me in the first kilometer. Ellis then caught me on the road somewhere in the second kilometer. I definitely felt like I didn't warm up as well as I should have done because I felt heavy and stiff early on, but I did manage to hold on just about to four minutes per kilometer in the first 5K. Just as fast as Jody Mills had sped past me in the first kilometer I sped past W Mills somewhere in the third kilometer. I had settled into a rhythm somewhat by the fourth kilometer but then we came to the turnaround just after 5k and all of a sudden there was a slight but significant headwind. W Mills catches me again on camera just after the turnaround somewhere in the sixth kilometer. You can see by my splits that I did lose a few seconds in kilometer six. Sam from the Light Me Up YouTube channel then catches me on his head cam running back along Madeira Drive with the 40 minute pacers hot on my heels and it wouldn't be long before they would catch me and overtake me. What is a little disappointing is that when I felt that headwind and I saw my pace drop off a little, I did lose heart somewhat. And when the 40 minute paces did eventually come past me, well, I made what might have been a wrong decision. I decided not to look at my watch anymore. It's something I've done before, sometimes it can work well, you just concentrate on running as hard as you can and I thought hopefully I might surprise myself. Unfortunately it may have had the opposite effect and I think I lost a little focus. By the way do please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and stay watching right to the end if you can uh, to find out what my actual 10k PB is and how long ago it was set. 
Just before the seventh kilometre is the only hill of any real significance in the race. And it is minuscule, but what with that and the headwind and then two thirds into the race, which is the worst time in the race, this hill came at just the wrong moment. You can see by my split here, it's where I lost the biggest chunk of time in the race. But remember, I wasn't looking at my watch, so I had no idea how I was doing. I think probably deep down I did realise I was slowing, but I was too afraid to look at my watch for fear of depressing myself even further. At least this way I could still continue to pretend I was doing better than I really was. I managed to rally somewhat in the final kilometre and Ellis caught me on camera sprinting for the line. I could see the clock on the gantry from quite a way out and I knew I was close, but just probably not close enough. I eventually crossed the finish line in an official chip time of 40 minutes and 18 seconds. Actually not a terrible performance. I beat my time from two years ago by a full 30 seconds, so it can't be all bad. Of course, my regret is the same as it is for a lot of us in these races. I lost confidence and focus in the second half of the race when fatigue started to take its toll. I also probably shouldn't have made the decision to ignore my watch as if I'd known how close I was to the sub 40 time, I might have started to rally earlier in the race. Right, Brighton 10K 2024, medal. So I didn't quite beat my sub 40 on the treadmill from last Sunday. I got about 40 minutes and 20 seconds, something like that. I went out and I felt it. I felt it quite hard actually in the first 5K and I was suffering a little bit. Um, and it, but I managed to keep up 40 minute pace. But on the way back, there was a little bit of a headwind. And uh, yeah, and I, I decided to not look at my watch because I thought it would just depress me too much. So I didn't look at my watch for the last 4K and I still came in 40 minutes and 20 odd seconds. So I can't complain, that's not too bad. Early on in marathon training, I can, uh, I can accept that. Also, as a side note, and uh, Jody from Crown My Run also picked up on this, it may have been measured to 10 kilometers, but in reality, we did have to run around about 50 to 60 meters further. Now, this is fine, it's normal, you know, GPS rounding errors, etc. cetera, um, but it did add probably 10 to 15 seconds to my race time. Also, just a note on heart rate. I don't usually wear a heart rate strap for racing these days. So the heart rate that you can see comes from the optical sensor on my wrist from the Garmin Phoenix 8 that I was wearing. Now, in general, I often think that wrist-based heart rate is actually perfectly okay in most situations. It's just that this situation was not one of those. Cold conditions are not great for optical heart rate and the reading I got from this race is way off what it normally would have been. My real heart rate was much more likely to be way higher. And by way of comparison here is the heart rate reading from the sub 40 minute 10k I did on the treadmill a week before when I was wearing a heart rate strap. As you know I am pretty experienced when it comes to running on the treadmill so I like to think that my efforts indoors and outdoors are pretty similar when it comes to times, heart rate and relative effort. So plenty of things to work on as we head into this season's spring marathon training block. I will be entering the Chichester 10K in February next year and I will be gunning for a sub 40 time there, if not a 10K PB, which remains at 39 minutes 45 seconds from way back in 2013. Now, continuing our weekend of staying behind to cheer in the final few runners, we were privileged to be there to see Mark Hickey come in as the final finisher of the Brighton 10K. A little over a year ago, having suffered from sepsis, Mark had his leg amputated. He's only been using his prosthesis for a few months, but battled to a two hour, 55 minute finish in aid of the Different Strokes charity and in memory of his dad, whom he lost to a stroke. 
Let me know in the comments what is your current 10k PB and what are your plans for 2025. Thank you so much for watching to the end and do please click the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you'd like to watch the last time I ran the Brighton 10k then click this link here. I'll see you over there in a second and I'll see you on the start line next time. Bye bye.